Hi, uh, this is April Rose, your Saturday Witchy Wisdom One host. This week's topic has been about writing spells. So writing spells can be a bit daunting and it can seem a bit complicated. Um, and sometimes it can be, but sometimes it can be very simple. Um, I think something that's important to consider um, when writing spells is how spells are viewed in you know, popular culture, in movies, in books, um, because inevitably that's going to affect how we practice, whether that's a conscious decision to not do things that way, or if we take inspiration from that. Um, oftentimes in um, books and movies, you know, spells are very fantasized. It's in the context of a fantasy world that doesn't exist. And the intent and outcomes of those spells are not realistic and is not something that is going to happen if we do a spell. Like, we're not going to turn invisible. We're not going to go flying off on a broomstick. We're not going to turn someone into a newt. So, in lieu of that, there are things that can be taken from popular culture as far as spell work. Sometimes you might be drawn to a particular aesthetic. What are they wearing? Uh, what kinds of symbols are being used? Um, what kind of words are being used? Is it written in prose? Does it rhyme? Oftentimes in culture it does. Some people like to have, you know, the words of their spell rhyme or have some form of, all of alliteration or musicality to it, something lyrical. Um, but not everyone likes that. Some people have difficulty um, kind of getting in tune with that. It, becomes more of a distraction than a help. And that's going to be different for everyone, and sometimes even uh, vary from situation to situation for just one person. Um, and that brings us to like how we perform our own spell work. Um, something that's important to do before you do a spell is to think about it, to brainstorm, to come up with ideas, to know exactly what you want and how you're going to do it. So now, you don't necessarily have to know exactly how you're going to do it. You don't have to know every single word you're going to say. You don't always have to know exactly every little item or symbol that you're going to use. Um, or even exactly what time you're going to do it. Schedules are busy. Sometimes Spells and magic have to work around mundane things. Um, but one thing that you should always do is think about your intent and why you're doing something. Otherwise, you might end up doing something that down the road you realize you didn't really want. Either you just don't care about it as much anymore, or that's actually something you don't want to happen. And coming into a situation like that can be very challenging, it can be very disrupting, and sometimes kind of scary when you've tried to manifest something that you actually actively don't want in your life anymore. Hopefully <laughs> you don't come across situations like that, but it can happen. So that's why it's really important to think a lot days, weeks ahead of time. You know, depending on what that spell is, um, if you that's what you really want to occur, what you really are trying to manifest in your life, what you really want to find an answer for. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just a matter of clarification. Um, are you actually asking or trying to obtain what you think you are? So it's important to put a lot of contemplation into spell work. Um, 
it's you want to think about is there a deadline is there a time at which it's no longer relevant or a time in which you won't want this to happen anymore um, sometimes there are like you need it to happen by a specific time or else it's useless or it's just not important anymore um, Oftentimes, though, that's not the case, and you want to try and really think about that. Do you really need a deadline for that spell? Maybe it's not as important as you think it might be. Maybe it could happen months, years later, and still be just as relevant. Um, maybe you think you don't need a deadline, but in... If you actually think about it, actually things need to happen in a certain order or, you know, by a certain, you know, event in your life in order for it to actually manifest in the way that you want it to. What kind of spell is this? Is this a binding spell? Are you trying to bring a certain energy into your life? and keep it there? Or are you trying to take a certain force that has been a bother lately and get rid of it? Are you trying to expel something? Are you trying to bring something into your life? Um, and sometimes binding spells can be used, like if, you know, there's a particularly troubling entity giving you issues, whether that be a spiritual entity or a person. And you need whatever that, you know, catalyst is that's causing this trouble to just stop. Um, sometimes it's appropriate to do a binding spell to make that uh, those certain situations not happen anymore. And that's kind of a slightly different binding spell than trying to bind a certain thing to your life, but trying to take it out, put it somewhere else, and make sure it never comes back ever again. <laughs> Um, and sometimes you might want to do a spell, um, to find the answer to something. Um, maybe you're confused about something that's going on in your life, or maybe there's something that you feel like you just don't have enough information about, and you're not having luck finding that information. Either you don't have the right connections, or you don't have a whole lot of research skills, you don't know where to look for it. Sometimes doing a spell to just try and find like little bits of answers and pieces can be helpful. Um, and once you've figured out what kind of spell you're doing, what you want it to do, uh, you kind of want to think about at least some rudimentary symbolism. Um, you don't want to just jump into a spell with no idea of how you're going to go about it. It doesn't always have to be really detailed, every little bit and piece pre-planned. There is definitely times when improvisation can help and can really get you to what you really want or get you in the right mood. Sometimes if you stress over little tiny minute you know, nitpicking, that just can be of a, a distraction, and that's something that you don't need in your spell work. Um, but you do want to have some rough idea. Um, like, what kinds of symbols are you most drawn to? Uh, what kind of archetypes are you most drawn to? What resonates with you? Sometimes you might already know that. Sometimes you might realize you never gave any thought to that, especially if you're just starting out. And in that case, you probably want to do some research to figure out what those are. Um, what resonates with you? What can actually get you into a mood where you feel like you're doing something magical? Because if you don't feel like you're doing something magical, you're probably not. <laughs> um, so... You want to take some time, and sometimes it might not take a lot of time. You might find something right away you might already know. Um, other times that could take months or years of research. Um, 
to come to a definitive conclusion about that. And it's okay to experiment. You can experiment with certain sets of symbols that you've never used before and see if it works. You might want to save that for smaller spells that you don't consider as important. Um, something that's not this huge big ritual that you had planned. You might want to just try the, those new things out with something s small and simple and it's not a huge deal if it doesn't come to pass. Um, and you also want to think then once you've found some symbols that, and archetypes that you feel attached to, um, are they relevant to the spell? Do they make sense for it? If you're doing a spell about travel and you really like the goddess Bast, who's an Egyptian cat goddess of partying and, you know, music and joy, <laughs> probably not relevant. You probably want to go, if the spell's about, you know, travel, or good travel, or getting to a point in your life that you want to travel, or can travel, you probably want to go with symbols that have to do with travel. So you want to make sure that not only are those symbols do, that they resonate with you, but that they make sense for what you're doing. Um, and you also want to think um, about ways that you can physically bring those symbols into play. Sometimes you can just meditate on something. Um, personally, I'm a very visual and very tactile person. I like to have things. Some, I am an artist. I draw. I love making little pen and ink, you know, um, sketches or like drawn out symbols, sigils, runes. I just, I draw lots of stuff. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be a work of art. It's usually not. But having something drawn out in pen, not in pencil, pencil smudges and erases and it's impermanent. So unless you're trying to make something impermanent, pencil's probably not a good idea. Unless it's like colored pencil, which doesn't really erase. Um, you probably want to go with something permanent, like a pen. Um, or paint. Or maybe you want to sculpt something out of clay. You want something, usually, that can stand the test of time. Um, or at least the time in which you need this to work. Um, figurines can help, like if you have figurines that you've bought or want to buy, um, as a visual reminder, whether that's something part of your altar or specific to the spell itself, it doesn't have to be big, it could be half an inch, inch in height, you know, um, keep it in a pocket, keep it in a little tiny drawstring bag with a, whatever else you're putting into the spell. Um, Sometimes found items in nature are great. Sticks, twigs, dirt, feathers, bones, clippings of fur from your cat or dog or, I don't know, maybe you have a snake and it sheds skin or you found some or you found a pretty stone or some seashells or some leaves. <laughs> or pressed flowers, or dried flowers, or really anything at all. Um, I like to just collect stuff, and if I find it on the ground and it doesn't look gross, I pick it up because I might need it, and I put it in a box, or I put it somewhere else that I can keep it and find it, or forget about it and then find it again, because those are great moments when you find something that you forgot that you had feels good, but it can be a bit frustrating when you know that you have it and you can't remember where you put it. So you want to think about that too. Um, 